Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I am David Rodriguez and today I'm going to be unboxing Hexport Volume 2 The Force of Adramon. Now I actually did this unboxing back to back with Volume 1. Uh, I have played Volume 3, but it's possible I'm going to be saying some of the same things in this video as I did for the Volume 1 uh, box as well because uh, I don't know if everyone's going to be watching both, so some stuff bears repeating, I, I believe. But Hopefully there'll be a lot of new things to talk about here as well. So the cool thing about Explore is that uh, each box has its own big adventure in it. And while it is not a campaign, which is great, it can play differently every time because there is a lot to do. These games are very sandboxy in general. I've heard that Volume 3, the one I have played, Sands of Shirax, might be the most um, open world kind of thing or a sandbox sort of game. But uh, nonetheless, I think they all have that element to it. And uh, Check out, check out this cover. This is such a cool cover. This gal is spooky as heck, and there's all these like people in the back that I think are sort of like possessed or, or um, under her sway, I believe. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember the plot of this. But anyway, um, that is the awesome cover. One thing I like about uh, these is uh, yeah, they make it look like a book. So the side looks like pages, and then on this side, it's it's more like the side binding of a book, which is fantastic. So I can't wait till I have all these on my shelf. I now have the first three, and the fourth one uh, successfully crowdfunded, and so that's gonna be heading my way whenever those head my way. So, ooh, we got a cool owl on the back, and then some like cool little, I thought they were pixies, but they kind of like more insecty bodies, but cool little bug thing is flitting around here. That's cool. Okay, so. Adramon Calls. Hexport is a hero-building adventure board game system. Journey through the mysterious and overgrown Greenfire Forest. Search for gear and supplies in cities that have been completely lost to the Magi, a terrible sorceress who has the power to control others. Make your way across the forest to destinations where powerful fragments lay. Then journey to one of the old battle sites and forge the relics anew. Battle through a variety of, of encounters while traveling or move carefully and see what other discoveries you might find. To save the forest, you must build your heroes and sneak out Elowen the Dryad, a powerful ally located in the strange Fey realm. Fate seems to work against you, and so you must move quickly. Adramon's power continues to grow and threaten your hero's sanity. Wait too long, and you'll join the ranks of the Mindwiped to serve her. The object of Explorit, the Forest of Adramon, is to craft relics of power that are designed to hinder the Magi's abilities. Power up your heroes and save what remains of the forest before taking the final battle to Adramon herself. Do this and surely the Mind Wipe will be freed from her maniacal grasp. Can you save the Green Fire Forest from Adramon? I don't know. I will say, <clears throat> having just unboxed the first one, the back of this is much more focused on the narrative and the story. The first one was was really almost a more like trying to entice you via uh, the mechanics and how you your character could advance, which is fine. But I think it it um, I, I think that was kind of an odd way to do it. I think this makes much more sense. You're getting people interested in the storyline. I think it sounds really cool. So uh, I'm excited to check that out. But let me go ahead and open this up. Oh, by the way, so it says it plays from 60 to 180 plus minutes for one to six players ages 14 and up. I'm not sure exactly how long my play of the volume three one was. It was a bit longer because I was learning the rules and then also I kept having to like take breaks to do other things. So just kind of hard to keep track of how long it actually took me, but um, it's not a short game. But again, it's not a campaign game. So you don't, you know, you're not stuck having to play with the same people every time or anything like that. So um, I really appreciate that. I like campaign games just fine, but they, it does make them a little harder to play. So let me get in here. So I'm excited to see what kind of hero races and classes are in here because you can mix and match them with the other ones. And I know in the Sands of Shirox, they're all very different. Like I, I, when I played, I was a snake person and then like sort of like a, not a fire elemental, like a fire, like, genie kind of, I don't know if that's right either, but um, uh, different races. And the first one looked like it had more typical fantasy stuff. It had like orcs and uh, trolls, humans, elves, all that sort of thing. So I'm curious what's going to be in this one. But I do like that you can mix and match classes and races throughout all the different sets. That's fantastic because if there's one thing I love is adding variety in the kind of characters you can play because it just, it just makes you want to come back to the game and try it in different ways. So here we have... This is going to be a big picture. This has the blown up version of the cover to Sands of Shurax, which again, that's the one that I played. Oh boy, on the other side. Oh, this is a list of like 
all the backers, I believe. Which is really cool, that's neat. I did not back this on Kickstarter, I had to get the retail edition. I don't know if there's any real differences or not. So, but that's really neat. I think if you uh, backed it, you get to see your name in there, that's cool. So it comes with a model to represent your players as you go over the board. So I'm pretty sure that one is what that is. Um, the other two all had had a model for the bad guy too, and I'm not seeing that in here, so I don't. This one maybe doesn't have that, which is is fine. All right, so here are the races you can play. So we have Wood Elves, Corrigan, Fairy, Nixies. Oh, here's some Kedgel's Great Sword. I'm not sure what that is. Scepter of Light. So this that's interesting. Oh, these are oh these are relics. You're forging relics in this game. I think it's kind of odd that they're sort of just mixed in here. But if I remember right. That's how uh, Sands of Shurax was too, where you'd have like all these different decks and they would be, there'd be, be just chunks of different ones throughout, so. Briarkin, Dentroll, Boggard, or Boggard? I believe this is pronounced as she. Uh, I believe, I think it's some kind of fairy folk. So here's some more relics, Jormunder Shield, Starfire Ring, Forestborn, Sprite, Fawn, Brownie, Archivan Staff, Figuring of Power. So this is a lot of like the, um, you know, Fey kind of characters, which is which is really interesting. So, those could be really fun to play, and I'm curious uh, what kind of skills they bring to it. This has like how you'll adjust your initial stats when you choose your uh, racing class. So, this one will have one more health and and three more energy. So, uh, each one's a little different, and they all have their own individual ability they can use to the game as well. So, there really is a lot of variety in that. This has a lot of dry erase markers because a lot of things on in this box are things you, you can uh, use dry erase markers on. So a lot of ways to keep track of things are, are, are with that and, and you know making notations on your um, your character board. So it's, it's kind of a neat system. I'm always afraid I'm gonna wipe something off that's important on accident and not remember what it is, but hasn't happened yet, so we'll see. Okay, so we have here the rule book which this one is, let's see, this one is 84 pages. I believe Sands of Shurox was up in like the mid 90s. Um, so yeah, it's it's no joke as far as rules go. Uh, it's actually not, I don't think it's that incredibly hard to get down. Like you can get the basics down and then kind of reference this. I will say that when I had, when I was learning Sands of Shurox, I did that via the, um, uh, the PDF of the rules, which was great. And then when I was playing it, I was using the rule book and just in that one play flipping through and finding things, some of the pages started to kind of fall out. So uh, I'm hoping I can figure out a place where I can get these all just spiral bound. So I don't have to worry about that because I'm, I'm very afraid I'll lose a page on, and not realize it. I mean, I think I would know and, and it's okay to just stuff them back in there. It's not the end of the world, but um, I wasn't really happy with the quality of how that one was bound. And that might've just been a defect with that particular box, I don't know, like maybe this one will be fine forever. No idea, but something to be aware of. Uh, this is the storybook. A lot of things in this game will have a little symbol that will tell you that there is a story element to them. And if so, you can go to the storybook and look up that thing and sort of read the flavor text on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of great art in this book. There's not a ton of great art through the game, like there's almost nothing on any cards, but um, it is gorgeous what they have. And I do like that they have this story thing and that it's even kind of, I mean, I guess it's always optional really, but it is nice that if you don't care about the story and you just want to play it as a mechanical thing, you can. But for someone like me who's really invested in the theme of a game, I like that it has this kind of thing and, and it's better that they put it in a separate book, I think, than try to cram so much on the cards that they have to use the tiniest font possible. <laughs> so, all right, so here's some uh, storage bags. Okay, so this I'm not really sure what we got here. This looks like it's gonna match the the, the hexes pretty well, but it's sort of like a. Let's see if we can get that to focus on It's like a cool building or something. It looks like a temple, maybe. I'm not certain, but that's that's really interesting. I'm curious how that will play into the game. Maybe they did that instead of having a model for the uh, the big bad of the game. All right, so here we have uh, a bunch of. Uh, the classes that you can play and this is an example of your dry erase board because you're going to be 
you know, keep a track of how you've upgraded your stats and uh, each one around here will have numbers. So how much it will cost to upgrade them because you can just pay money in certain spots to um, basically upgrade your different stats. Uh, so there's four different classes. There's sappers, strikers, or I should say types of classes, uh, assist, and what is the other one? I wonder if the other one's not in this one. Interesting. Okay. Oh, and utility. There you go. So uh, you basically have the fighty type, more of like a support type, healer type, and then I don't actually remember what the other one does. So when I played uh, Sins of Shurix, I used a fighty type and a healer type because I figured that's the best all around, and that's also what they uh, recommended. So that was good. So we have the Solipsist. It says, Sweet Dreams Are Made By Me. So it looks like maybe they do some sort of sleep thing to people. This is a really cool picture though. Wow. Like I said, I like that big cat creature in the back. The art in this game is fantastic. It's just not as in as many places as you might expect. The Verdant Keeper, you may not touch these lands. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, wow. Floromancer, let the forest heal, heal you. I like the idea of a Floromancer, that's cool. The centaur thing going. The Druid, nature always finds a way. Awesome. The storm caller, the winds call me to victory. Fantastic. The historian, you ought to read more. <laughs> Sounds right. Okay. There he is. Looking through all the books. All right, this is your battle mat. This is where you're going to keep track of a lot of things, like when you're fighting an enemy, uh, you know, how much damage you've dealt to them and, and energy and whatnot. So there's kind of a lot going on here, but uh, it also has a way that you can adjust the difficulty on this thing so you you start at anyone you want and you can move it up at any time but you can never move it back down so that's an interesting system i guess no one would come and beat you up if you tried though so you'd probably be okay here's a list of conditions on the back that you can get during the game that you probably don't want all right so these ones are like the kind of boss creatures that uh, there's several spots on the map where you can go and uh deal with boss creatures and i'll show you that whenever we get to the tiles but we have ergos the dire bear Oh, well, we got more classes. Never mind. Okay, these are all kind of mixed up. So you have the Warden. If you want them, you'll go through me first. Cool look. I'm not sure what, uh, what race that is, but it's interesting. All right. So Theranos, the Rotting Treant. Oh, sucks to be Theranos. Hathaweer, the Great. That's a cool owl. Oh, boy. These are so mixed up. The Soul Reaver. If souls are sacred, I am divine. Oh, that's a really neat picture. I love it. All right. Oh boy. Marak Kek, the Mad King. He's pretty creepy looking. The Death Moth. Oh, excellent. All right. So we have, these are going to be some references for what some of like the buildings do. So we have Wayposts in this game, Battle Sites. Uh, we have the reference for the game turns here, more on the back. Uh, here's some more bosses. We have the Enraged Elemental. And oh, there's Adramon. That is the big bad of the game. So uh, I'm curious because the the big bad in Sands of Shurak is so ridiculously brutal. Like she's got this one has 120 health and 120 energy. That's that's a lot. But in Sands of Shurak, the big boss had like that many hit points on just part of its body, which I don't even know how it's possible to be honest with you. Enthralled cities, let's see what happens there. Sentinels, I'm not sure what that's about, we'll have to see. Oh, more bosses. Uh, the Wendigo, that's pretty neat. And the Sarthoen, the Dark Dryad, that's cool. Okay, and then we have Elowen's Grove, which is gonna have some reference for what happens there. Grove items, very cool. So, the game comes with these boxes that'll have certain decks in it. So we have, this is the power up deck that's gonna have all the ways your character can sort of level up. <clears throat> this is the circumstances deck, which is gonna be uh, mostly random encounters as you travel. And this is destinations and fragments. So this one I'm a little less sure of. Uh, I'll show you these, but it's probably worth noting that I'm not, I'm not gonna open these up because there's really not, for the most part, a lot of art. So it has the back. This one has a little kind of shadowed out figure for the figurine, but most of these cards don't have art on them. Like they're really, just telling you what what is happening, what the thing is, and a lot of them may reference back to that storybook so you can read more about it. But <clears throat> this is what I mean when I say that the game doesn't have like a lot of art 
in it. It's just not, they didn't just do art for every single card, which probably would have made it much more expensive if they had, so I don't really blame them. But it would have been kind of nice if I'm not, uh, if I'm not lying here, so. Yeah, so same thing, these are the upgrades. So like, for instance, if you got this one, you would get a permanent upgrade to your energy, and it's three, that's a big deal, so. Lots of good stuff. That's one of the ways you can kind of level up your character because you're going to be doing a lot of that as the game goes on. You get more powerful very quickly. Here's all the different dice you use. The tens are for skill checks and you want to roll low on those. You want to low, roll below whatever your skill is. Uh, the uh, cube ones, I believe, or the six-sided, I think you use for like fights and whatnot. This one has an eight-sided dice, which the others have not had. I don't know what that's about. So uh, we'll find out. So I'm guessing my tiles with hexes are underneath here. Okay. Oh boy, I'm having trouble get my fingers alongside, so I'm gonna kind of tip this over and do this with it. Oh boy. These do not want to come out very easily. Come on, hexes. You can do it. All right. So, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking at these because it's, uh, they don't necessarily look that interesting. Although, what are these? What are these weird creatures? I'm not sure what I'm looking at there. But uh, we have like the, 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 tiles that go along the border, and then the ones that fill out the middle. I'm just gonna flip there and see if there's anything especially interesting. There's, there's specific kinds of places that, uh, I, I'm not sure what they mean in this game, that various things will happen. The red spaces are where you would go to fight a boss. A lot of times, you could just choose to do that, but you can also get a quest from a city or town, and they will send you to fight bosses, so. Pretty neat, the different terrain can matter. Like if you have a mountain, that's peak goes up beyond the hex and that's like an impassable terrain. It's too tall for you to climb, but uh, you're gonna put all these out. And then I know at least in Sands of Shirax, like it was, it was a little bit randomized how, um, how they would come out as you went. Like when you went to the edge of an area, you would put a new hex out that you would draw sort of randomly and it would create the, the landscape for you. So pretty interesting. Much like others, there's a lot in this. The next sport system is really cool. I really like it, and so I am extremely excited to give this one a try. And I'm really excited now. I think what I'm gonna do next time I play any one of these is I'm gonna get out all of the heroes or the, uh, the races and classes that I have for any of these sets. I'm just gonna dig through them and I'm gonna mix them up to find what will hopefully be a really useful type of hero. One that can handle most things or can get themselves that can handle most things. Cause that's, I love this kind of variety. I absolutely adore it. I wish all games could somehow do something like this where you have, you know, so many different options that you can combine things and um, play the game that way. This is not gonna fit in the way it came out. <laughs> That's okay, I've got a lot of punching to do on this, so. Um, I'm really quite excited about this. And what I'm hoping to do, once the fourth one comes out, is I will do probably, I might do a specific review of the fourth one and then maybe do a review that kind of uh, does an overview of all of it together. I'm not sure exactly how I want to structure that. I might just do them all at once and with a focus on the fourth one, I'm not sure. Either way, um, if you're looking for an adventure game and you don't necessarily want a campaign game, but you still want variety that you can keep coming back to a lot, the Hex Sports system is awesome. I definitely recommend taking a look, see if there's one that you're interested in. Uh, I started with the Sands of Shirax and I heard that while that is the most open-ended, like the most sandboxy one, that it is maybe the worst one to start with. So uh, maybe don't start there like I did. You know, check out one of the other two that are currently available or wait for that fourth one that's coming out. I don't know how that will be compared to the others, but um, either way, uh, it's it's a really cool system if you don't mind that half to your roll book. So anyway, I hope this video has been interesting to you. If it has, please hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. If you liked that video, I think you might also enjoy this one. Or this one. Please hit this little button to subscribe so you can see all our future videos as they come out. We'll see you around the table. Bye. Bye.